Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a super cheap, powerful PC that can play most AAA games at 1440p. Now there's actually a couple ways that you can go about this build. If you want to get used parts, you can get out for about $380 picking everything up on eBay. Or if you want to do new parts, it's under $500, so it's right at around $485. And I gotta say, when planning for this build, I knew we were gonna see some really great performance, but I'm kind of blown away by what this thing can do, given the price point. We've definitely got a few things to go over for this build, and I wanna get some testing out of the way, but before we get into it, I do wanna mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. As we're putting this thing together, I will go over the parts used and I'll also leave links for everything in the description below, new and used. Remember, you can come out at two different price points with this whole setup. But first things first, we need to talk about the CPU and motherboard. For this build, I went with the Ryzen 5 5600 non-X variant due to pricing right now. You can pick this up new for $150 or you can even get it for around $80 over on eBay. And when it comes to the motherboard, I went with an Asus B550M. This is the Prime Edition. Not too bad and it does support PCIe X16 4.0 and that's going to come in really handy for the GPU we're going to be using. And for the cooler, I actually did a little bit of an upgrade because I bought the 5600 that I'm using used. It didn't come with a cooler. Box looks like this. It's the Wraith Stealth, but I'm using the Wraith Spire. I got it for $18 on eBay. And of course you can pick up a third party cooler that's gonna work just as well, but I figured I'd go all AMD with it. It's gonna cool this 5600 just fine. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. This is from Team Force and brand new on Amazon right now. You can get this kit for around 34 bucks. I've used it in the past. Actually, the red variant, same exact thing, works out really well with these AM4 CPUs. We're also going to need some storage and there's several different options online. I went with a one terabyte Lexar PCIe 3.0 NVMe SSD. It's going to fit right in here. And I would recommend a little M.2 cooler because this board does not come with one. And of course, we're going to need something to put all of this in. I actually went with the NWIN A3. I personally love this case and it is a bit expensive when it's not on sale. But during Black Friday 2023, I picked one of these up for $54. It was definitely a deal. Checking out Amazon, there are cases over there for $30 up to $300. You can go with whatever you like. Personally, I just love the look of this, and it's one I've been wanting to get my hands on, so I figured I'd go ahead and use it for this build. I love the fact that we can actually mount our power supply up front here, and it does come with a shroud to kind of block it off, just to keep it nice and clean. And speaking of the power supply, Thermaltake Smart 500 Watt Power Supply. It's a non-modular unit, but they're $40 on Amazon. This is going to offer more than enough power than we need for this build with the 5600 and the GPU we're going to be using here. The pairing that I went with is a bit unconventional, but uh, it's actually a GPU that I personally really like. I've done some testing with it in the past along with a lot of their other new GPUs. For this build, we're actually going with the Arc A750. Brand new right now, you can pick these up for around $180. I've seen them on eBay, or you could go used with it. I've seen a bunch of them. And personally, I love the look of the Intel first party cards. All black design, got a little Intel Arc logo that lights up on the side. Nothing fancy. I think it's a super clean little card. 
And once we've got everything together, it looks a little something like this. Nothing fancy at all. We do have that Intel Arc logo that lights up on the side of the GPU. And since I'm using a Wraith Spire cooler, we do have that red outline around the cooler itself. I think it goes together quite nicely. And of course, we could have went all out with a bunch of fans, RGB, but we wanted to keep this simple. We wanted to keep it cheap and we wanted to get good performance out of this thing. And I think this setup offers an awesome balance. Okay, so first things first, with this art card, you definitely want to enable resizable bar. Now this is in different places in a BIOS. If you're using this ASUS Prime, it's right here in the easy page. You want to make sure this is on. It's basically going to turn it to auto. This is going to really up that GPU performance with a lot of games. And I'll give you an example in just a little bit, but make sure you have resizable bar enabled from your BIOS. All right, so here we are. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 5 5600, just six cores, 12 threads, uh, 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. And of course, we've got that Intel Arc A750. Now there is a little bit of tweaking that I like to do with these ARC cards. Obviously you will want the latest ARC driver. I'm using the beta driver right now. And with this, you get the ARC control center. Over on the left-hand side, we're gonna go to performance, performance tuning. From here, you can get a little bit of a GPU performance boost, but the main setting that I like to change here is our GPU core power limit. This card is set at 190, but I'm just gonna take it on up to 226, apply. That way we know we can send sufficient power to this ARC A750 and keep those clocks up. I've really not had good luck with, uh, you know, overclocking the card itself. Just that core power limit really helps out. And the very first thing I wanted to take a look at were some GPU benchmarks that I ran on this rig. First up, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a strong 46,804. And I know this is a lower end benchmark, but I always like running it just to kind of compare to iGPUs down the road. Next on the list, we've got Fire Strike, 23,546. And finally, Time Spy with an 11,118. These synthetics aren't looking bad at all, and I'm pretty sure we're going to see some awesome gaming performance. And the first game we're going to be testing out is Cyberpunk 2077. Keep in mind, with this first clip, resizable bar is turned off in the BIOS. 1440p, high settings with Intel XESS set to balance. Resizable bar is off, so you can see we're not at 60 FPS, but as soon as I enabled it from the BIOS, our average here at 1440p high with XESS set to balance jumped up to 71 FPS. It alleviated all of the stuttering that I had going on without resizable bar on. So it's definitely a must with this card and the ARC A770 if you wanted to upgrade just a bit from the 750. And yeah, I think that this is something that some people run into with these ARC cards when they first start testing them out. Resizable bar may be off in the BIOS or they're using an older board that doesn't support it. But with most of these games, having it enabled really does up that frame rate. And I went through and tested a couple other games. I'm not going to show them off. Just note that the newer AAA stuff really does need it. I always like to throw at least one fighting game in. So here's Mortal Kombat 1, 1440p, high settings. Not bad. I mean, we're seeing some great performance here at a constant 60 FPS. I did try ultra high and without XESS enabled, we are a little under 60 there, but high still looks great at 1440p. And this little setup's handling it just fine. This is Project Cars 2, and the reason I threw it in here is because I personally still love playing it, and I haven't done a lot of testing with these older games on art. Right now, we're at very high settings, 1440p, and we got an average of 87 FPS, but every once in a while, you'll see it dip down to around 65, just through those corners when there's a lot of cars on screen. It didn't dip under, and we're seeing some decent performance here, but I thought it would be a bit more. I also wanted to test out Red Dead 2, so I used the built-in benchmark. We're at basically a high medium mix with no resolution scale, 1440p. And you can see here, we did have a low of 18, but that was as soon as we were loading into the game. I saw it dip way down and then come right back up. But we had an average of 83 and a maximum of 122 with this one. And finally, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1440p, very high with no XESS. Originally, with resizable bar off, same exact settings, I was seeing an average of around 61, but I had some dips under 60 when we get to a lot of pedestrians on the street. So again, resizable bar is definitely a must for these newer games. 
So overall, I think it's a really great performer given the price we can build one of these for, whether you use new or used parts. Obviously, using used parts, you may have to hunt a little more, but you can bring that price way down. I priced it out around 380 or right there under 500 if you want to go all new with it. Like I mentioned, I will leave links to everything I used for this build in the description. I'm also going to hunt down some used parts, but they might go fast. They'll be on eBay. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.